conflict in Syria has now claimed over more than 250,000 lives and over 4.2 million refugees have fled abroad, according to the UN. A further 7.6 million Syrians have been uprooted within their homeland. Backlash has emerged against nations offering to accept refugees since the November Paris bombings and with many parties citing security concerns and terrorism fears. I'm putting the people on notice that are coming here from Syria as part of this mass migration that if I win, if I win, they're going back. They're going back. I'm telling you. They're going back. But this hasn't stopped communities around the world from speaking out in favour of welcoming refugees and warning against Muslim stereotypes. I mean, it's really unfortunate. It, it, it really means that the terrorists are winning um, when they entrench that fear in us. That's what they're trying to do. We are joined by the founder and executive director of the Syrian Community Network, Suzanne Akras, to give us further insight into the situation. Thank you for joining us, Suzanne. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us a little bit, Suzanne, about uh, what the Syrian people are leaving behind and, uh, and, and what most refugees, um, for them, what was life like in Syria? Well, uh, before the crisis, um, things were kind of somewhat, or seemed okay. Uh, uh, there was relative safety in Syria. People, you know, went to school, went to work, did the usual things that everybody would do. Um, of course, uh, they were living under dictatorship, uh, and it's been a dictatorship that's been uh, there in Syria for about 40 years now. And, um, you know, and, and that eventually seeps into the society. Um, where it's a top, top-down kind of effect on people, where it's uh, it, it, eventually it's uh, it's neighbor against neighbor, and it's uh, kind of um, it becomes like part of their whole personality, where people just kind of like have to do what they need to do to just to survive. So there was a lot of corruption, there was a lot of nepotism, there was um, there were you know things that were happening. There was no justice for people. Um, and as you know, the fa um, in the 80s also there was an uprising uh, against uh, Hafez al-Assad, the father, uh, which he crushed brutally uh, in a matter of month uh, and one month. And uh, in 1982, he basically uh, destroyed a whole city, the city of Hama. And um, so, th so you know, so these are things that people had had been living with. But you know, they were quiet and and they were just going about their business. Uh, everybody was fearful. People knew that the walls were always had ears. Uh, so people just kind of stayed out of politics and just went about their daily business, hoping that uh, year by year things would get better. But things were not getting better, unfortunately. Mazakras works with refugee resettlement in the U.S. and says that while resettlement is difficult, recent fear mongering and leaders crying terrorist has a significant impact on refugees. It worries them, it upsets them greatly because they feel like, you know, that, that we escaped this terror, we escaped this, you know, uh, terrible regime. Uh, we don't want to go somewhere else where we now are labeled as the extremists or as the terrorists. You know, they want to live their life in peace. Well, one of the things that we do uh, with our organization, the Syrian Community, is we do cultural sensitivity trainings with um, the different uh, caseworkers, at the resettlement, resettlement agencies and interfaith groups that work with refugees. So that's kind of something that we, you know, kind of provide. And we help, uh, help the uh, volunteers navigate through um, you know, understanding the culture, the religion, um, you know, knowing that uh, Syrians are not only Muslims, but they can be uh, Christians and Shia and, and, and Druze and Armenians, and we're very diverse. Mazakras emphasizes that Syrians have much to offer their new homes. And so I think well, once Syrians come here and they start to resettle after a few years, it's going to be a difficult transition. It's not, let's not pretend it's not hard. It's going to be very difficult. But I think in time, they will be the ones who will um, reinvigorate, I think, the economy. Um, certainly in the north side of Chicago, there's so many refugees in, 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 in one part of Chicago. Uh, diverse and right now in the last 10 years there has been a boom to the economy in that part of the city because there's refugees from all over the world living there Iraqis, Somalis, um, Bhutanese, uh, Vietnamese and so that uh, that area is very diverse and very you know um, you know doing very well now and there's all these businesses booming so I think Syrians will come with some innovation some ideas and um, certainly will uh, you know I'm sure down the line we'll, we'll hear about some hummus um, brand you know that was started by a Syrian or a Syrian refugee and certainly as you know the iPhone uh, was invented by a Syrian migrant uh, Steve Jobs was happy you know, his father immigrated just like my dad came to the United States so we take a lot of pride in and that you know people most people or most immigrants no matter whether they're Syrian or not they they come with a hard work ethic thank you Suzanne we look forward to seeing silver linings this is Kate Roth reporting for Peace News <laughs>